Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us and thank you for staying tuned in to everything Mile High, including being at Mile High in June, June 3rd to 6th. And we never want you to miss any Mile High tick. So be sure to hit subscribe, whether you're watching this or listening to this on iTunes or YouTube or Stitcher or any of the other channels. And I am very honored, humbled to have as our guest on this uh, episode, someone who you need to know which is Kenneth Harris, Dr. Ken Harris. Um, he's a 74, 1974 graduate of Columbia uh, Chiropractic, Columbia Institute of Chiropractic. Um, I think it was called Columbia Institute, if I'm correct, yeah. Um, and was a classmate of Irene Gold and taught at Columbia. And then uh, went on to found the Mind Body Wellness Education Center, and has published a book, Synchronicity, um, in and, and has done so many and taught so many in chiropractic. Uh, anytime I speak to Dr. Ken, I all know I always walk away or leave enlightened or better in some insight that he shares. So I know there'll be lots of insights on this episode. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Kent. Well, it's my pleasure, Danny, and I'm, and I'm honored and humbled to be a guest on your podcast. Well, thank you very much. Um, and, and let's start, we were talking a little bit before off recording. Let's start with how you found your way to chiropractic. <laughs> well, when I was in high school, I dated a girl whose father was a chiropractor. And being somewhat of a skeptic, I ridiculed him relentlessly, at which point she broke up with me. She said, that's it. I don't want to <laughs> go out with you anymore. You keep putting my dad's profession down. And I was quite arrogant, actually. So as life would have it, the next girlfriend I meet in college, from high school to college, her father's a chiropractor. Back to back, a little sequential synchronicity here going. However, when I met my wife, Judy, I really liked her. And so I got the intuition to keep my mouth shut and don't say anything bad about her daddy because I just <laughs> lost a girlfriend with that scenario. Long story short, uh, I got my first chiropractic adjustment from Judy's dad. And uh, I would also mention that Judy's dad and grandpa were, were both chiropractors. And as I told you, the grandfather actually got locked up and went to prison for chiropractic because he was practicing medicine without a license back in Brooklyn many, many moons ago. So I kept my mouth shut. Judy and I dated. One day I'm having this incredible allergy attack. And the father says, I, I'd like to give you an adjustment. And I said, well, what's that? And what is it gonna do for this? <laughs> he said, well, let me show you. I said, okay, go for it. So he gave me a master cervical break. Well, within minutes, my allergy attack cessated. Now that had never happened before. I, I used to take pills, antihistamines, blah, blah, blah. It would take hours for the, for the attack to su subside. But I got an instantaneous response to the first chiropractic adjustment that my, my uh, father-in-law gave me. Now I still didn't get the big idea. You gotta understand, I thought it was a good treatment for allergies. As most people think it's good for what they get response to. It was over that summer, Judy and I uh, were both school teachers she hurt herself. I took her into a chiropractic office, literally carried her in. She walked out. I was pretty impressed. Took her back the second day for a follow-up checkup, and I had an epiphany. I was sitting in a room all by myself in the waiting room, and I see this brochure, Careers in Chiropractic. So out of curiosity, I pick it up, I read it, but I instantaneously knew this was something I was supposed to be doing. It talked about total well-being, health, not back aches, not neck aches. It talked about the relationship between the brain and the body. And I was sold. I was pretty scientifically oriented. I said, this makes sense. Enrolled in chiropractic college, first day in school, my classmate sitting next to me is Irene Gold. She says, you want to really learn about chiropractic? Why don't you come up once a month to my home? My husband, Reggie, he teaches. I said, sure, I'll come. And the rest is history. Amazing. Amazing. And, and we've got that in common. The first reason that I received chiropractic care was allergies. 
Uh, it made yeah, and it made a huge impact. And actually, it was why my mom ended up going to chiropractic school is because my allergies that I had ch challenged with had resolved. So see how things come, uh, how things are all synchronistic. I would say so. We didn't know that. He didn't tell me that, and he didn't know about me. But here it is. It's it's emerging. And and and, and yes, and something emerging. Now let's fast forward, and then we're going to fill in the middle. Okay. So let's fast forward to now. You've been working on one. You have your book Synchronicity. Okay. And number two, uh, the Backbone Movie Project. Where what are you focusing on now? Well, I, I got like three or four irons in the fire, as they say, you know, three or four different endeavors. Of course, my book has gone around the world through Amazon. So I get correspondence every day from people all over the world. They're sending me their synchronicity stories because everybody's got one. And we and invite people them. Get, and people can get this on Amazon. They get it on Amazon. They can go anywhere and, and request it. Barnes and Nobles. Uh, they can go to Walmart. They can go on my website. It's, it's available. It's far and wide. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting all this correspondence. So I'm daily re responding with people. And it's a great because they're sharing their stories with me because everybody's having synchronistic stories. Uh, so that's one thing that my energy is focused on. I'm also focused on, uh, I have been for the last several months with this release of this series called Backbone. And it's the relationship of chiropractic to the military uh, and how chiropractic is gonna fulfill a need that's missing in the military in a big way. Uh, Many of the military soldiers come back with PTSD. They come back with chronic neck and back pain. They come back with uh, depression. They come back with uh, many of them attempting to commit suicide. And many of them have discovered, unbeknownst to, 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 uh, to them at the time, that chiropractic is far reaching, way beyond just relieving their back pain. It, it affects them on an emotional level, affects them on a spiritual level. So. We've developed this program where there are 9,000 officers in America who have volunteered to take care of the veterans for free. And this series backbone is gonna elevate the chiropractic uh, image and perspective to the larger audience, showing them that from a vitalistic point of view, by the way, I would, I would mention, we're not talking necks and backs here, we're talking vitalism throughout the whole series. But what's impressive is many of these men who were rangers and, and uh, para, para rescuers and uh, you know, heroes in the military, they became chiropractors. And it's in the movie because it helped them when nothing else could. So you're gonna hear quite a few testimonials. I remember when I was teaching at, at Columbia uh, in the old days, in 1974, 75, many of the students experienced chiropractic prior to entering school. They had personal experience and many of them had miraculous healings as a result. Today, you don't find that so much. A lot of the young people come into chiropractic today, many of them have never been under chiropractic care or never really experienced it. But when you hear someone talk about they were told they were gonna be a cripple and never walk again, and now they're running marathons, and this is in the, in the Backbone series in the movie, amongst many others, it, it'll really um, uh, have impact. Some guy was talking about killing himself, and it wasn't until he got under care that he realized that that's not what he needed to be doing. He needed to get well and his chiropractor helped him through that whole process. So I'm, I'm excited about the Backbone series. I'm also excited about a, a, a group I call the Sage Wisdom of the Chiropractic Council. Hold on one second before you go there. How do people get to watch the Backbone series? They just go on uh, Facebook or they, just, they, they can go on uh, the internet. It's called backboneseries.com. It'll bring up the website and everything is self-explanatory there. It's a 10, it's an 11 part series. It's 11 hours, but they're segmented. They're, there's 11 distinct episodes with two extra films added on. And uh, four of the episodes are exclusively of chiropractic. Some of the other episodes talk about other healing modalities, holistic approaches to wellness. The, the backstory is one, one of the protagonists, he goes on a quest for healing and he visited chiropractic colleges, he visited chiropractic offices, and, and the whole uh, vitalism as we know it has been beautifully explained. So the public will, will watch this and they'll realize that chiropractic goes way beyond neck and back and pain. And it's very impactful. And, and so anyway, that's how they can get it. Backboneseries.com. Backboneseries.com. And we'll, for people that are driving, don't, don't try to 
type it in. Um, we will put it. We will put it in the liner notes so you can have this with the uh, episode. So yeah. So then fast forward. Uh, you were about to discuss the sage wisdom of the el chiropractic elders. Right, which is your fault, Danny, because I was at your seminar two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. And I, I think I told you the story, but I'll tell it for the public. I was sitting in the back of the room and I was loving what I was seeing. This was not a seminar. This is this, anyone listening to this who doesn't know anything about Mal High, make no mistake about it. This is a this is a chiropractic movement. This is not just someplace you go to get spizzed. This is way beyond the average, uh, what I would call chiropractic uh, convention. It's not a convention, it's a movement. And I'm sitting in the back and I'm loving what I'm hearing. I'm loving what I'm seeing. I'm seeing enthusiasm. I'm seeing a lot of youth, a lot of, a lot of uh, I would say, spizzerinctum. That's an old word from BJ Palmer. But I didn't see a lot of elders. I didn't see a lot of old, older people with no hair as I have or gray hair. And I said, you know, these young people, they could benefit, I think, from being exposed to some of us who have ran the marathon. You know, I was 45 years in practice. I think I know something about being successful in chiropractic practice. And I think they could benefit if they, if we started creating some kind of a, a, a platform or a place for mentorship uh, to, to, uh, to, bring the, to bring the generations together. So I called up four of my colleagues, all of them were four, 40 or more years in practice. And uh, we spent a year getting to know each other. And I will mention this, uh, the other four men and myself all went to different colleges, all practiced different techniques, all charged different fee systems, but we were all in agreement on the principles. And the number one thing that we all had in common was the consciousness of service. We all knew we were here to serve. Chiropractic was our vehicle for service. And we got to know each other quite well. And after one year of meeting in Zoom, we had our debut opening at your seminar the following year. Uh, we had a council and we included Donnie in that. He came on board, he was the, he was the sixth member. And it, went, and it was, I thought it was a, an, an extremely impactful and purposeful uh, uh, forum for, for the young people there. So now we're, we're gonna be showing up uh, at some other venues. Hopefully we'll come back to Mile High but we're looking at Sherman College Lyceum, we're looking at New Beginnings. So that's taken up a lot of my time too, this, this chiropractic sage council. And, and I wanna say how important that is. Um, we have so much information in our world and information is not the same as wisdom. And um, really for people that are um, connected to chiropractic to, learn and be around for with the others that have been serving in different ways, maybe some serving in practice, some serving with uh, four-legged species, some serving in, in books and movies, um, but serving uh, the principle, there's a vantage point that people can gain from that's different than, you know, information, right? So uh, very, very important. And we're, we were really honored with that session that you guys did at Mile High. And we do hope you you come back at, you know, sooner rather than later, but at some point, either way. Um, now, with that, now let's, let's go back a little bit. Um, what was it like teaching? What was chiropractic education like when you were at Columbia, you know, at that time in chiropractic history? Well... <laughs> There wasn't a lot of it. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of chiropractic education. There were remnants. I shouldn't say that. Uh, Dr. Pasquale Sarasoli was still on the faculty and he carried a consciousness, the bigness of the vision of chiropractic. And I, honestly, if I hadn't met Irene, I don't know that I would be who I am today because she exposed me to Reggie once a month for 36 months. So the majority of my chiropractic education came through uh, Reggie Gold. Uh, in, in the early days. The school didn't have a lot of it. There was a lot of uh, a potpourri of, of approaches. Uh, other than Sorosoli, I can't really begin to tell you there was anyone else who really stood out for me. But I was blessed to, uh, as I say, to sit next to Irene and she just looked over and she said, hey, you want to learn about real chiropractic? Come with me. So it, there was not a lot going on in, in Colombia. Uh, you know, Napolitano you know, was an interesting, he was the president and he knew the truth. 
but he was uh, very politicized. He had he, he couldn't say what he wanted to say because they would take the accreditation away from the school at the time, which I hate to say maybe is going on in our profession still with some of these state boards. That's gone on. That's, that hasn't stopped going away. That started way back and it's continued to go on. Um, and a lot of schools and educators are, you know, shackled by the by 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 their license, the licensing system. So, however, you had some greats around you. You had Pasquale, Tajacomo, Gold, Whitehorn. What did you what, what was Tom Whitehorn like? A lot of people don't even know who he is. Right. Well, Tom was iconoclastic. Let me put it that way. He was he was. There was only one Tom Whitehorn, and he let you know it. He was different, but he he was, um, he, you know, he had studied with B.J. Palmer. He studied in the B.J. Palmer Clinic, and he was an upper cervical guy, very specific uh, about what he he did. He only adjusted Atlas, and only when it quote needed it. And he taught all the uh, the neurocalligraph. He taught us the. Uh, he taught us technique with the speeders. We were check, we were all day long doing our speeders for HIO. You know, the speeders, they used to have these old fashioned ones. Uh, and he was a principled man. I mean, he, and he charged, interestingly, he charged a lot of money for his adjustment. He wasn't giving it away. Unlike Reggie, who had a, a GPC uh, a fee structure, Tom charged a lot of money because he felt he was, his idea was, he had to charge more than the doctor downstairs was charging, who was an MD. Because he, he wanted to have value, he wanted people to perceive the value in what he was offering. But he he was he was a he was a, he was a Renaissance guy, and, and he liked the girls too. <laughs> he was older, but he he really liked the young girls. And I think he actually married a young woman uh, later in life. So God bless him. He was a friend of mine, and and he and I are the only two who uh, really stood up to the uh, powers that be in the, in the school at the time. But I, honestly, I also right after I graduated. The year I graduated, I got invited back to teach at the school. I was the valedictorian. So they gave me this kudo, come back and teach. And that first year, I met Dr. William H. Bain. The Bain, many people yes. probably never heard that name here, but his last name is B-A-H-A-N. And if you Google him or go on YouTube, I made a movie of his life. A oh, life I did of, not know yeah, that. Yeah, it's a life of uh, a legacy of love and inspiration. Dr. William H. Bain. A legacy of love and inspiration. It's in three parts. It's on YouTube. It's for free. But when I met Bill, he had come to the school as a uh, guest lecturer. I sat in the room with 200 people in the back because I was curious. I was nosy. I had heard they had the biggest chiropractic practice. He didn't call it practice, by the way, chiropractic service in the entire world. And it was seeing 3,000 people a week back then in Derry, New Hampshire. People would come by the busloads. And they too are upper cervical guys. They only had to make one decision. Is it right, left, or don't touch them today? <laughs> anyway, when Bill started to speak, I had an epiphany. Uh, actually, what happened to me, I had an altered state of consciousness. Everybody in the room disappeared for me. And he was just talking to me that day. And uh, he had that kind of uh, personality. Bill, Bill, If you met Bill, you'd never forget meeting him. He had that kind of an aura or a presence. And uh, he was the chiropractor's chiropractor. Let me put it that way. Had he stayed in chiropractic, BJ would have given him the baton to run the profession. That's how dynamic he was. And he, he was the, uh, Reggie was an incredible communicator for the public, but Bill had another level of communication for the profession that I felt, felt was an evolving understanding of what we're all about in chiropractic, about the unification of the spiritual and physical man. He really, he really focused in on that. And uh, he had an incredible sense of humor and he'd never forget your name if he met you once. He always made you, when you were with Bill, there was no one else in the world but you and him. He had that present time consciousness to be with you. Unfortunately, he died rather young, but I mentored with him for 10 years. Oh, I did not know that. I did. He was, he was my, uh, my, my chiropractic mentor after graduation. In, in his offices? Well, I traveled with him. I lectured with him. I, I, I lived on his, he had a farm. I lived on his farm for a while. I took a, a series of uh, trainings with him. I learned about non-touch uh, adjustments called attunements. So right. there was a lot, there was a lot that went on with, uh, with Bill and I. As a matter of fact, Danny, as we speak, I have his picture right here next to me as a reminder. I take, whenever I did give a talk, I, I take him with me. And, and many people don't know that is also at Sherman, the Tom and May Bayhan Library was donated by them. Right, that's the brother of Bill. Right. 
That was Bill had five brothers. They were right. all chiropractors. Right. Yes. I yeah. was up to the clinic. I was up to the clinic. It was unbelievable what was going on there. Uh, Ernie Landy, as, as many of your people, listeners know, he was also mentored by Bill. I, 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 in the movie that I made of Bill's life, he talks about one day he got 70 new patients. Two, two busloads of people came to Bill's office. And Ernie watched the movie. He says, hey, Ken, I was there that day. I x-rayed all 70 of them. <laughs> Imagine the x-raying 70 new patients in one day. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And now that brings us to another area, which is consciousness. So we don't talk, con chiropractors don't talk as much about consciousness as I think uh, we did in the past. Um, and I think there's something about consciousness that you feel is part of a really important part of the chiropractic values and principles. Can you share about that? Well, not only did I think it, but BJ Palmer said it. B.J. Palmer said two chiropractors can give the same adjustment. One gets results and the other doesn't. Why? They can both toggle the patient. The patient gets up after one of them and it has a tremendous uh, experience. Another one can toggle them. They get up, there's nothing happening. And B.J. says it's because of the innate presence of the chiropractor given the adjustment. The chiropractor who's connected to his own innate intelligence will then have a... a a nonverbal, non non talkative communication with the spiritual aspect of the patient, and that's where the magic happens. Now, it happened with your father-in-law and me, and you were there. I came to Omega Institute. I had had a, a brachial, we'll call it a brachial neuralgia plexus uh, a syndrome. No one was helping me. I was getting all kinds of adjustments, and I had a dream to go see Donnie Epstein. And it's in the book. I, there's a little s section there. And, and, and yeah. so I wake up the next day and uh, I get the catalog in the mail from Omega Institute. And you and you and Donnie are there teaching. And it was only 45 minutes from where I was staying. So I said, that's a message. I'm supposed to go see him. I'm going to get in the car, go over. And I remember going into the room. I forgot that you were in the room at the time. I thought he everybody had gone to lunch, but you were there too. And he sits me on it looks like a massage table. I guess it was. It wasn't, it wasn't a typical adjusting table. It was high. Right. And he said, sit here. First of all, he greeted me. Hi, Dr. Ken, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was Donnie, one of Donnie's instructors. I don't want to say I was his teacher because he's got a teacher far beyond me. But anyway, he's connected to some other teachers that, that I don't even know who they are, but he's definitely connected. And he sits me down and he starts walking around the table in silence, not saying a word. And I'm saying to myself, isn't he going to let me down? I told him I got this brachial plug. I figure he's going to adjust my neck in some way. And all of a sudden, he stands behind me and he toggles me sitting up on C5. And the entrapment immediately released. And I said to Donnie, how did you do that? And he, he said, well, I was feeling the energy. I was, I was assessing the field. And he was interdirected where to go, right time, right place, you know, right vertebra. And after months of suffering, it immediately released and never came back. So the power of presence is important, regardless of what technique you're using. You'll be told what the appropriate technique is if you're in presence. Sometimes it's cavitation. Sometimes it's gonna be a little flick. Sometimes it's gonna be a block. Sometimes it's gonna be an impulsor, but you'll be guided if you're in presence, if you're in present time and if you're connected. If, if you're, well, I'll call it, if your brain and your heart are in coherence, you'll be, you'll be directed what to do intuitively. And that's not being taught in school, unfortunately. Well, and that's the gift. And, and at the same time, um, that's part of why when I say we're information overloaded and, you know, wisdom deprived, like there's a lot of wisdom in what you just shared. You, you know, there's probably students or recent grads who put a whole bunch of textbook stuff <laughs> that might be informational, but doesn't contain what you just talked about. Right. And having said that, I studied with all the masters. I studied with Gonstead. I would mark my x-rays. I, I read all, the, all the, the, the books. I went to the seminars. I studied with Clay Thompson. I studied with Major DeJarnet. So I'm not saying techniques are not important. Oh, I have a lot right. of tools. I got a lot of tools in my bag. But I, when, when to take out which one is intuitive. I didn't treat everybody the same way. 
my 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 clinic was my office was not not uh, everybody gets the same adjustment. No, no. Some right. days I didn't adjust anybody. I mean, I, I I would say you're clear. It's okay. Go home. And right. if they if they know that you know and they're clear about it, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to do anything. They're happy actually. They used to be happy. I'm holding. You're holding based on the criteria I was using at the time. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying we, we should never throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you're listening and you're young, learn all the techniques. Have a lot, you know, here's, here's the analogy I'll give you. A screw is stuck in the wall. It's a Phillips head screw nut. You can get it out with a flat head, but it's hard. But if you get the right Phillips head size screw, you can a screwdriver, you'll get that screw out real easy. And that's the value of technique, when to and when not to, when to apply, when not to apply. But that comes with experience. You know, I've tested thousands and thousands of people over my 45 years, as, as have, you know, Donnie and various other ones. All the guys on the uh, council, we've all had big practices in the, you know, back in the day. I mean, we, we, saw, we saw families from cradle. I used to say I have a cradle to the grave, a womb to the tomb practice. If you're alive, you're a candidate to come to my office. We didn't treat, we never treated conditions. I was never condition based. I, I would avoid asking them how they feel. I didn't say, how you doing today, Mary? Because then they would tell you. <laughs> I'd say, lay down, let, let me check you. And I had classes, that's another thing. If you're not giving uh, public education, what we call lay lectures, you're missing the boat. That's the, that's the most inexpensive way of building your practice. I gave every Wednesday night for maybe 30 years, my same talk. Now, sometimes I had one, sometimes I had 25. It didn't matter. They got the same talk. It was like a restaurant. The only as good as your last meal. If, if they say, oh, there's only three people out there tonight, well, we won't cook it the same way, you're gonna lose those three people. So I gave my all whether one showed up or 50 showed up. And by the way, I've had a couple of uh, patients bring me over 50 patients. One patient bought 50. So never judge, you know, give, give them the best. Give, whether there's one out there talking or 500 out there, tell them the story. Because you don't know what they're gonna hear. You do not know what they're going to hear. I, know I, have, you know, I have that same experience in caring for people. Same experience. I believe those who find their way to you were sent. That's my belief. That, and if anyone shows up in your office, there's a reason for them being there. Mm -hmm. Now, some are going to stay with you for life. I, I still got a half a dozen or a dozen people come to me. I'm not in practice anymore, but they've been coming. They've been coming once a week for 50 years. Not because, not, you know, and that goes beyond, you know, if you can have that kind of staying power with people, my PVA was like 300. I didn't have a revolving door practice. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing, the big cry in chiropractic, you know, you've heard it for a hundred years. How do I get more new patients? And I say, take care of the ones you got. They'll bring you the new ones, but take right. care of the ones who are, you're with now. Right. And let them do your advertising. You know, if you go into a restaurant, and you see the same waiting staff year after year, you mm -hmm. know the boss is treating them well. He's right. taking care of his staff. You know what they do? They take care of the customers. You take care of your patients, they'll bring the people to you. Right, right, right. Absolutely, and those are very important principles that get lost very frequently um, in practice. Um, so we have synchronicity book, we have backbone movie. We have really a, a who's who of people that have um, impacted your life in terms of chiropractic uh, ch chiropractic teachers. You have the elder, elder wisdom, uh, elder panel group, excuse me, the sage wisdom of the uh, chiropractic elders. Um, and with all of that, that really is a, a, a life calling. It's a life calling. It's not just individual projects. It's it's a it's a life calling that then is you know impacted into many different areas. Where would you like to see chiropractic um, go in the coming years? Well, if we're going to go anywhere, Danny, in all honesty, we got to got our, our house is divided. The chiropractic profession is fractured. And I hate to say it, so is our country right now. And you know, they say a house divided against itself will not stand. We're no <laughs> longer the United States. We've never been able to unify in chiropractic. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one, of my hopes, one of my hopes with the council is that we could heal some of the fracture. 
within our own profession, starting with the vitalistic community. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go across the board to, to the mechanistic community at this point, but there's enough fracture just in our own vitalistic community. And so in the indigenous cultures, the elders are the surround ones. We need to get the chiefs in a sweat lodge. That's my vision. We need to get all the college presidents who, who align to vitalism in a, in, a, in a container with some Native American elders and us and do some real, real hard work to bring about a, uh, to, to put down the competition. There's no competition. You know, the reason we haven't grown as a profession is because we've been fighting in fighting. The medics love to see us fight. Oh, keep keep it up. <laughs> You'll never get your rightful place. We are, right. we are, in my opinion, chiropractic is true health care. We are we are the true health care doctors. I'm not against medicine. Medicine saved your life. As to the as a matter of fact, medicine saved my life. That's what it does best, EMG, emergency medicine. But it has nothing to do with health care. We are the true healthcare providers. And so if we can get our act together and become into a unified place and educate the public now with this coronavirus, this is a great opportunity for chiropractic because who's getting sick and who's dying? All the comorbidities, all the people who've been sick all along. And I hate to say it, for the most part, the virus, the corona, coronavirus tips them over the top. It's the one extra thing that they can't survive with. They, so they die with it, not necessarily from it, but right. dying from the comorbidities. Yeah. Who's better to teach people how to stay well than you and me? Right, right. And um, you'll see how much the people that um, have adaptable nerve systems and healthy lifestyles, um, you know, recover well, um, you know, for, for the high, high, high majority. Right. Um, and adapt, right? And so helping a person be um, be able to make healthier choices and to function better is crucial. And it's it's what people, I, you know, I'm in practice and it's what people are asking about. They're actually, you know, the, the health is top of mind now in a new context for them right. to make it a priority. So right. um, it really can be, it, it, it should be chiropractic's finest hour. To, to well, hopefully we'll take the ball and run with it. Now, to be clear, in my practice, I was not everything to everybody. I practiced chiropractic, okay? That's what I was trained to do. But I had other people doing other things. I had a nutritionist, I had a yoga teacher, I had a meditation teacher. That's why I created the umbrella of the Mind Body Wellness Center, okay? So that people could be instructed by other practitioners what they need to do. As you know, chiropractic is, is a triune nature. You got structure, you got biochemistry and you got psycho spirituality. You, you got all three and all three need to be adjusted. I, I found out early on that the adjustment, although powerful in some cases was not enough to bring health restoration. People had to do other things like change their diet, exercise, meditate. So, but I didn't try to do that. I didn't try to be that for them but I hired other people to come in and teach them. And, and the results were phenomenal as a result. So, uh, at the risk of sounding like a mixer, which I was, <laughs> those terms don't mean anything to me anymore. Years ago, you know, I was a DE guy. I, I, I evolved over time. There were years ago, I wouldn't talk to someone if they adjusted below the atlas. You know, that, that's mixing, but that's ridiculous. And anyway, as you get older, you mature, you become wiser. But I think uh, we can spearhead it. The chiropractic profession can be the, the vanguard of that holistic consciousness. And in the Backbone series, this young soldier, he goes to chiropractic, he goes to other places on, in his quest for healing because there's multi-dimensional multi, multi levels going on here. So we can't be everything, but what we bring to focus, no one else is bringing. No one else is doing what we do. Right. We're not a duplication. Right, right. We're unique and separate, but right. that doesn't mean we can't coalesce and work with other people. Well, in Stevenson's, they discuss constructive survival values and destructive survival values. Stack the constructive survival values and limit the destructive ones. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to be the one doing the constructive survival values, but you want to encourage people to do more constructive and less destructive, right? So uh, that's that's a very important concept for people to understand that's 
you know, vital to the chiropractic principles. Um, you know, sub subluxation correction is not the cure all. It doesn't cure anything, but uh, you know, it's important to make sure people realize that it's not the panacea. But well, uh, I think you know, D.D. Palmer said it. He said there are three causes, right? Right. Trauma, auto suggestion, right? Right. And what was the third one? Toxins. <laughs> Toxins. And, and, and so that causes the subluxation. So correcting the subluxation by itself without addressing the cause of the cause, you might say, is, is a revolving door. Right. Well, They're well, both needed. They're both needed. You need to make the correction, but the people got to stop doing the thing that's causing them to be subluxated. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, in my experience of 45 years, the physical uh, causes of subluxation were easy to fix. That was not a problem. All right. Toxins were a little more difficult because people had to stop eating the garbage. But the emotional and psycho-spiritual causes of subluxation were the most difficult to clear. Pa patients that were stuck in their stuff, in their story, they were very difficult to get 100% clearings. Now, Jay Comeric, who you know well, is on yeah. the council. He says, hey, Ken, I adjust the horse a few times. They, they respond immediately. And I said, what's the difference between a horse and people? He says, the horse doesn't have a story. <laughs> and they reset themselves and it's true with children i've taken care of many children they don't have a story they respond beautifully to what we do you mean you mean educated brain right <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right 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 so uh well well i, I want to say I, 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 before we close out i want to thank you for all your all that you've given to chiropractic over the years um, and all you're given to humanity and you continue to give. And, and what would you like to, how, how can people get in touch with you further? Very simple. I have a, I have a very sophisticated website. It's called Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R. They won't let me use D-R, KenHarris.com. So it's the full word, Dr. KenHarris.com. If you Google my name, there's 100,000 Ken Harris's. And about 50,000 Dr. Ken Harris's, but I don't know any of them. They're no relatives, but I had to use the whole word Dr. Ken Harris. And on my website, it's self-explanatory. They can navigate. They can, they'll know more about me than I know. There's many podcasts there, many interviews, lots of good things. And we hope that they'll sign up to stay connected. I give a free newsletter every month on wellness and consciousness. And I give them a five-page printout, a synopsis of the book called The User-Friendly Guide to categorizing and understanding synchronicities. Excellent. Well, I hope many people pick up the book. I'm typing this in so we have it for the notes. I hope many people pick up the book and stay connected to Dr. Ken and increase their connection to the universe as well as increase their synchronicity. And um, you know, hope many people make it out to Mile High 2021, June 3rd to 6th. Um, in the Backbone series, We'll have the link for that as well, but you know we'll have it in all your notes. Um, but definitely check that out so uh, you can be further inspired to impact more lives um, with chiropractic. Uh, now this is unsolicited. He didn't ask me to do this, folks. <laughs> You're thinking about going to Mile High? Don't think. Do it. You will not regret it. This the energy there. Listen, I've been around a long time. I've been to a lot of seminars. This is not a seminar. The energy there will elevate you. It's not a shot in the arm. It's not a hype. It's it's a movement. That's all I can tell you. And it's probably uh, one of the things that might save chiropractic moving forward. So, Danny, I thank you and Michelle for what you've held together now for is eight years now. Is it going on eight? I mean, it's incredible what you've done uh, from from scratch. And I know it hasn't been easy. I know there's been lots of this as there is in life with any movement, but you've stayed through it and you stayed through it through your illness, which most people would have said, that's it, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going home with, you know, this, what, what you went through, what many people know or don't know, but what he had to go through and still maintain what he did, kudos to you. That says something about your integrity and your character. So thank you for what you're doing. Well, we, we appreciate it. And you know, the, the principles live in, in my heart and soul. So uh, the world needs it. So, and, and thank you for people like you, uh, one of the many people that have touched my life and continue to touch many people's lives. So thank you all for being part of the, the best part of Mile High, the listeners and the attendees and the people that, you know, value the same things that we love. So 
Uh, and thank you, Dr. Ken. Uh, everybody, keep changing spines, lives, and minds with chiropractic, and we will see you on higher ground in June.